Let's talk about the Dunning-Kruger effect. Once we manifest what we think is truth, the shortcuts our brain uses in order to analyze information quickly. Their confidence drops. And only when they become an Never expert with it. does the Dunning-Kruger effect has been shown in a wide variety of fields, from chess players to wine tasters to hunters and even doctors. Oh, you know, Fonzie data triplets. <laughs> smelly cat, smelly cat, it's not your fault. You know what? I love Phoebe. She's different, she's fun, and she's also smart in her own way. Radiator. Five letters. Herditor. <laughs> but her singing, man, it's like god awful. And that's what makes her song so funny. On his wedding day. <laughs> Baby! <laughs> Though there is something else which makes them even funnier. It's the fact that Phoebe never realizes how bad her singing is. And why do you think she never realizes that? Well, these guys know the answer. Inhone is a paper published kiya tha, and they showed that Phoebe sucks at singing and never realizes it because Phoebe sucks at singing. Thoda simplify karte hai. In order to judge singing, you need to have some taste in it. You need to know what good music sounds like. And if you don't, then you're very likely to fall into the illusion that you're awesome because you don't know what awesome is. If you only know a little bit about a field, you actually lack the knowledge necessary to grasp the fact that you suck. This is called the Dunning-Kruger effect. In their famous paper, which by the way was not about Phoebe or singing per se, these Cornell scientists showed that people who are highly incompetent at a particular skill tend to highly overestimate themselves. They don't know all that there is to know about something and hence they think that they know it all. Ek kuen ke mandak ki tarah. Aisi machine lagaunga, is side se alu ghusega, us side se sona niklega. Yeh joh bade bade neta bade sirf wohi desh ka bala nahi kar sakte. Ghar ghar se aise fan hatana, ceiling fan hatana zyada zaruri hai. Kyunki isi ceiling fan se latak ke bahu, beti, har koi atma kya karta hai? Are you fully alive? Satellites in space don't exist. It do every concert. Just try. I'm just trying to work that out. I mean, are you stupid? No. When you Google the Dunning-Kruger effect, you get this graph. It shows that as competence increases, confidence increases at first. But when you see how vast and complicated the domain really is, your confidence falls into the valley of despair. And only when you persist for much longer does your confidence rise and this time more genuinely. I mean, this makes so much sense, right? The people who never cross the peak of stupidity remain dumb and super confident. Have you not somehow always known this? The whole problem with the world is that fools and fanatics are always so certain of themselves and the wise so full of doubts. If you have lived in the world, you know this to be true. And that's why the Dunning-Kruger effect got so popular that people use it in arguments all the time. There are tons of articles and videos on it. Even Ted Ed made one. But here's a little secret. The Dunning-Kruger effect has been debunked. But what does that mean? Have the dumb gone smart all of a sudden? Actually, that's not true, Leonard. In fact, recently I've been thinking that given the parameters of your experiment, the transport of electrons through the aperture of the nanofabricated metal rings is qualitatively no different than the experiment already conducted in the Netherlands. <laughs> the first thing is to get rid of this graph. It's just made up by people as an oversimplification. What Dunning-Kruger really did is to test students on different areas of expertise like humor, English grammar, logical reasoning, etc. And then they plotted the students' actual score versus what they thought they scored. And voila, there, that gap, that gap is the difference in perception versus reality. 
The main thing is that this gap widens as you move towards the lower scoring individuals, which shows that the lower you score, the higher is your relative illusion, the bigger is your perception of your own knowledge. Makes sense, right? This study in fact was replicated with different people using different skill sets and by different scientists and you got the same old pattern. And so the Dunning-Kruger effect was named one of the cognitive biases. Matlab ki insani dimaag ka ek locha. Humare dimaag mein aise bahut sare cognitive biases hote hain aur unme se ek hai confirmation bias. मतलब कि हमारा दिमाग उन बातों को सुनने के लिए और कंफर्म करने के लिए बहुत ही उतावला होता है जो हमको पहले से ही लगता है कि सही है आर माइंड रेडिली एक्सेप्ट डेटा थीरीज एंड हाइपोथिस दैट कंफर्म आर प्री एग्जिस्टिंग बिलीव जैसे कि कोई बंदा खुद को एथीस्ट कहता है देन ही इज मोर लाइकली टू इग्नोर द डेटा एंड आर्ग्यूमेंट सपोर्टिंग रिलीजन एंड स्पिरिचुअलिटी एंड इज लाइकली टू जम्प एट एनी थिंग दैट डेनीग्रेट्स इट एंड द सेम माइट बी ट्रू वाइस वर्सा The only way to diffuse the spell of confirmation bias is to continually question yourself and to think and practice with a goal with a goal to move an inch closer to the truth each time slowly and steadily perhaps that's the only way to stop sucking and that's what we missed to do with the dunning kruger effect we just grabbed on to it because it confirmed our intuitions and it made arguing with loud and dumb people so much easier and the crazy thing is dunning and kruger had themselves warned off about this in their original paper finally two papers were published in 2016 and 17 which critiqued the original method used by dunning and kruger for its lack of rigor they tried to model a similar experiment but instead of using real people they let a program generate random data with noise and voila they got a pattern strikingly similar to dunning kruger's if you get the same pattern with random noise to iska kya matlab hai iska matlab hai ki us pattern ka koi physical significance nahi hai another paper written last year attacked dunning kruger more directly and we are seeing some good articles on it in the last couple of months the reason for this illusion is a concept called regression to the mean which happens at the extremities of the data and is kind of out of scope for this video but let me give it a quick shot you know the people who scored very low you know they are very likely to say that they did better because they couldn't go any lower i mean if you got 3 out of 100 you're more likely to say that you got 4 5 6 then you are likely to say 0 1 2 so does this mean that in reality the incompetent are really not overconfident actually no we are all overconfident The critique only showed that the variation of our confidence with skill that is this gap that is an illusion that doesn't mean that we are good at estimating our own abilities it shows that more or less everyone is equally likely to be overconfident about their abilities there is another bias that they have discovered which we are all vulnerable to called above than average bias which means that people in general believe that they are above average in their skills In one study, more than 90% of drivers said that their skills are above average, which if you think about it makes no statistical sense. It is because in general, we don't know what the average is. We don't know the position of our knowledge and skill compared to what's out there. Please please don't take this video to mean that science is dishonest. On the contrary iski beauty dekhiye na ki science kis tarah se khud ko correct karta hai aur it's the only philosophy which is completely open to feedback and challenges and that's what makes it so powerful. Science does have a qualitative there's a qualitative difference. It is in some sense stepping outside of the mythological framework. You know and it's because it's this really powerful technique. It's like okay what is the nature of our shared experience now it's it's that's not exactly what science is about it's more like if we behave in such and such a way something will happen we're going to interpret that from a subjective perspective like a personal perspective let's say but what happens if we get 100 people to do that and they all observe the the outcome and then 
they all tell a story about it and then we take what's common across the stories. It's like, oh, well that's interesting. We get a new way of describing things. 